Hi, this video is going to look at uh, 25 mark questions in paper one. So after you have answered the multiple choice questions, the calculation questions and the three nine mark questions that I'm expecting in the 2019 series, but might not happen, um, you will get onto sections C and D in the exam paper. Each section, section C and section D, comprises of two questions and you have a choice of which one of the two questions that you will answer. So you're going to answer two 25 mark questions in total and you have a choice of either question 22 or 23 and either question 24 or 25. So you must answer one of these two questions. You get a choice of which one you answer and then you do the same again in section D. Just draw your attention to this. Um, just make sure you know how to show the examiner which question that you've answered. Now, it's really, really important that you uh, pick the right question. It sounds obvious, but um, if you uh, have a look at the first question, you think, right, I'm going for that one. You get halfway through answering it and you're not sure where you're going. You're not going to do yourself any favours by crossing that out and starting the next question. It's much, much better in terms of time management to take a couple of minutes with a pencil or a pen and just in the margins, just think about what your conclusion would be for each essay. All right. And the better one, the one that you're most clear on is obviously the one that you are going to go for. Right. Make sure you know what your conclusion is before you start writing a 25 mark question. That is going to make your essay much, much better. OK, so. Um, and, and, and it will help you select the right question, right? Whichever one you've got the better conclusion for uh, is probably the one to go for. So um, let's have a look at the mark scheme for 25 marks. How do you get 25 marks? Well, first of all, the 25 marks are, are composed of uh, this breakdown. So you get five marks for AO1, which is knowledge, four marks for application, which is um applying your knowledge to, to a relevant context three marks for analysis but you can see the vast majority of marks are for evaluation okay AO4 so how does that work well for your AO1 marks you're going to um, demonstrate a depth and range of knowledge that is precise and well selected in other words you're going to bring in some relevant models maybe you're bringing the motivational theorists like Maslow or Hertzberg um, maybe you're bringing Griner's model of growth, but it needs to be precise and well selected. You can't just bring in like um, uh, Griner's model of growth if it's not appropriate to the question. All right, make sure that everything that you mention is precise and well selected. Basically, it contributes to answering the question. That's how you pick up your AO1 marks. Your AO2 and AO3, well, you need to analyze throughout the essay and it's well-developed analysis that's applied effectively to the context and considers a balanced range of issues. So it's applied effectively so you give some business examples. Right, the skill of analysis is one that can be quite difficult to teach um, and as a result of that I see a lot of you know, models presented to students, which can be very helpful to teach them how to um, analyze things like, you know, uh, P-E-E-L, um, B-L-T-U, you know, what, what, what people are trying to do is show you how to build an argument that's in context using connectives. Now, what the government wants you to do, and in every subject where you've got analysis, which is pretty much every A-level subject, history, geography, um, psychology, right? If you are building an analytical argument, it's the same skill that's being tested throughout all of the A-levels. Analysis just means that you are able to express yourself very, very clearly um, in a complex manner, building a chain of argument, all right? Which means using connectives. doesn't matter what order you use those connectives in. But that's basically what analysis is. If you can, if you your history teacher gives you a great way to analyze in history, well, it's the same 
it's the same model that they're testing. It's the same skill in business. So bring that in. That's fine. Um, uh, the other thing is it needs to be a balanced range of the issue. So the analysis needs to look at both sides of the argument. Um, finally, your conclusion. Where do you get your AO uh, four marks for? Well, you make judgments or provide solutions which are built effectively on the preceding analysis. In other words, don't bring anything radically new into your conclusion. Your conclusion needs to show balance. And the answers had a clear focus on the question as a whole throughout. So um, that, that's what the examiner is looking for in a 25 mark question. Um, so back to the questions um, from these are from 2017. And I'll quickly just run you through my plans for answering these questions. You might just want to pause the video and write a quick like bullet point plan uh, for how you would approach each of these questions. Um, and this is how I would uh, approach the questions. Obviously, I would not write a plan in this much detail in the actual exam, but I just wanted to talk you through uh, how I'm thinking about each of these questions. So I've used the colours here to break down the actual question. It's really important to um, understand what the question is asking you. A question, you can split it into three elements. The instruction, what you're being asked to do, that's like the command word, so what extent, to what extent is really the sign from AQA that you need to evaluate and show a conclusion. The focus of the question is the relevant topics being assessed. In this case, um, it's linking productivity to delegation. And is there a specific type of business to consider? In this case, it's a very broad question. It's a business. So you can bring in lots of different business scenarios to answer this question. The question is, if business wants to increase the productivity of its workforce, to what extent is greater use of delegation likely to be an effective way? Okay, now this um, is the key part of the question really. Is delegation an effective way for the business to achieve this? It's not asking, you know, what's an alternative way to delegation? The question is just asking, is delegation an effective way? Yes or no? It's not asking you to say, well, you know, an alternative method is going to be better. Okay, you just need to focus on the question in this case. So how would I structure my answer? I'd do a brief introduction. And because I know what my conclusion is before I'm starting, I'd say something along the lines of delegation means empowering workers, which can lead to increased output per worker or productivity, providing they have the uh, skills to make decisions. All right. So I'm effectively answering the question in my introduction, which is, is the greater use of delegation effective to increase productivity? Well, it can be effective providing workers have got the skills to make decisions. Um, and that's basically what my whole essay is going to look at. So paragraph one, to give it some structure, I'm going to look at reasons delegation might increase productivity. Well, I would make a link between um, delegation means giving greater responsibility to workers. That can lead to motivation. Wouldn't just mention motivation I'd specifically links to Hertzberg's motivating factors um, uh, and Maslow's hierarchy of needs you know uh, self-esteem self-actualization and therefore output per worker should rise I'd mentioned the fact that um, uh, delegation allows junior employees to make decisions which frees up managerial time and should increase managerial productivity um, it may mean that workers enjoy their work, staff retention increases, the experience of staff across the company rises, and there's higher productivity. So I might not mention all of them, but they were just the ideas that sprung to mind. My second paragraph is going to show some balance, because if you remember what the examiner wants, they want a balanced range of issues. So why might delegation not increase productivity? Well, it could increase strain on workers, stress levels rise. All the workers might lack skills or experience, therefore more mistakes and productivity actually falls. Okay, so now I need to come to my conclusion. What does a good conclusion do? It makes a clear judgment, all right, um, which is built on my analysis. So my clear judgment is that it can be an effective way, all right, 
to um, increase productivity. All right, this phrase here, effective, it looks inconsequential, but that's actually answering the question. So if there's like a hook word uh, like this, it's important to mention it in your answer. But it needs to be um, it needs to be supported. All right, you need to um, uh, back up your argument. Why, why do I think it can be effective? Well, both Hertzberg and Maslow identify responsibility and meaningful work as a motivator, um, and therefore uh, leading to higher output per worker, etc. But remember, we need to show some balance um, in our conclusion. So I might say that productivity might actually fall in the short term because you know, if you're delegating to inexperienced staff, they're not used to decision making, they might make mistakes. But in the long run, with careful training, correct management style productivity should actually increase. So I've got a bit of balance in there as well. So that's how I'm thinking on this first question. Um, what context or examples could I use? Well, I would want to drop in some scenarios. I could talk about where staff are experienced and highly skilled versus inexperienced and not highly skilled. Um, I could talk about supermarkets where some decisions need to be centralized. Uh, while some decisions can be delegated, all right? So in some situ situations, it's not practical to de delegate decision-making. Like Tesco can't delegate marketing for, to each individual branch because then you'd have loads of different logos for Tesco and it, would, um, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, and I would talk about maybe growing businesses need to delegate, you know, uh, more responsibility. You could drop that in at some point. Um you know, and the kind of depends on things that I would sort to look to mention, right? A successful level of delegation depends on the management attitude to risks and are they going to accept mistakes? If you're delegating, you're probably going to get more mistakes. Um, the level of training and experience of staff will be important. Um, and the need for centralized, consistent decisions to be made. You know, if that's the case, you might need to find other ways to increase productivity. All right, so uh, you've got a few points there. Um, you know, you could also argue, like the question saying, a business wants to increase the productivity of the workforce. To what extent is greater use of delegation? Well, you could ask, you know, what's the cause of that low, low productivity? Would automation be more effective? But again, the question is, you know, is delegation an effective way for the business to increase productivity? Could automation be more effective? Uh, I'm just conscious that the video is getting slightly long. I do have um, an answer to the other one, um, the other question, but maybe I'll do that in a separate video because I don't want to go on too long in this one.